You can put together the most powerful rig imaginable and try to keep it as safe as you can by not visiting questionable websites, putting it in a locked room, and maybe defending it from your cat's claws with a Nerf gun or something. But there are some things you just can't predict. Asteroid strikes, nuclear war, and perhaps the worst of all, power outages. There aren't too many things more frustrating than being in the middle of writing an important paper or work report when everything just suddenly goes dark. Fortunately, a great defense against this has been around for quite a while, the UPS. And I don't mean having a guy in brown shorts deliver a generator to your house. I'm talking about uninterruptible power supplies, which can keep your equipment running even if the power grid has gone dark. There are many different kinds of UPSs on the market with different internal workings, but the basic principle of operation they all share is this. You plug your UPS into the wall, and then you plug whatever you're using, computer, monitor, server rack, or whatever, into the UPS, kind of like you would a power strip or surge protector. The UPS has an internal battery that gets charged from the wall, so if the power goes out, your UPS can keep your stuff running. Keep in mind, however, that UPS is designed for and affordable enough for home use won't keep your PC running for hours on end during a blackout. They're designed to give you enough time to save your work and shut down your computer properly so you don't lose anything important, but that's kind of it. Buying the right UPS can give you longer running time, more features, and increased reliability, so how do you know what to pick? One of the most important specs to pay attention to is how much power the UPS can deliver. What makes this a little complicated though is that it isn't just a matter of, say, matching your power supply's wattage to the UPS's. UPS capacities are typically given in volt amps instead of watts. But those of you who paid attention to physics will know that volts times amps give you watts, so isn't that just the same thing? In UPS land though, they aren't because of resistance present in electrical loads. So you'll want to pick up a UPS with a volt amp rating 50 to 75% above whatever the typical wattage load from your PC will be. And of course, make sure you factor in everything else that you have plugged in, such as a monitor. Some UPSs are also what's called line interactive, meaning they have a special transformer built in that can deal with voltage dips or surges if you live in an area where the power grid just, you know, isn't the best and you have to deal with stuff like frequent brownouts that make your lights flicker. Since electronics need a steady supply of power, this can give you a great additional layer of protection even if the power doesn't go out completely. Also, pay attention to what kind of software the UPS comes with. Many units will allow you to connect the UPS to your computer with a USB cable and use software that will tell you the battery life of your UPS and how many minutes of uptime to expect if the power goes out, as well as automatically shut down your computer properly once the battery gets low. Some UPS software will even save your work for you beforehand, a very useful tool in case you stepped out of the room or even left the house entirely when the power went out. And of course, you want to make sure that whatever UPS you get can actually give you enough runtime off the battery. Many UPSs will state a number of minutes on the spec sheet, but remember, this is only at a certain wattage. So if you have tons of stuff plugged in and you're in the middle of gaming at 4K, you simply won't have as much time. So keep these tips in your mind and you can rest easy if there's a freak blackout or something. Well, at least about your electronics, since not much can save you from having to replace all that food in your fridge if you're stuck without power for long enough. Audible.com is the leading provider of audiobooks with more than 180,000 downloadable titles across all of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. Audiobooks are great to listen to when you are, you know, like driving to work, stuck in traffic, sitting on the subway, sitting on the train, sitting on the bus, sitting on the uh, plane, going to the gym, doing errands, shopping, gaming. I literally know people that listen to audiobooks while they play multiplayer games because the, the amount of times that you hear the like level up sound or quest accepted sound in World of Warcraft, whatever. Audible is offering a free 30-day trial. Just go to audible.com slash techquickie and browse the over, like I just said, 180,000 audio programs. Download a title for free and start listening. It's that easy to try out their service. I suggest checking out The Martian because who doesn't want to listen about feces and potatoes? It's just awesome. Okay, that's not all that it's about. He gets left on Mars, people leave, and it's like his whole adventure of how he survives and stuff. It's super interesting. You should check it out. Again, audible.com slash techwiki.
Thanks for watching. If you liked it, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Check out Channel Super Fun. We do fun things over there. Dennis doesn't want me to show a specific one. He just wants to put one randomly on top of my face because he's like, we don't know when the video is going to go live, so we don't know which one is going to be relevant or most recent. And now he's sitting there all mad at me and stuff. Whatever, Dennis. Anyways, bye. Thanks for watching. I didn't say that. <laughs>